Welcome back, folks, to round two coverage of the College National Disc Golf Championships. I'm Pavo Stubstad of Central Coast Disc Golf, joined once again by tournament director John Baker. John, why don't you tell me a little bit about the format for this event and the coverage we're going to be looking at today versus our team's event from yesterday. The single scores from today will be average, so all the players on the team will get their scores averaged together, dropping the decimals, rounding, and then that score will be added to the team rounds and will be uh, added towards the team total at the end of the event. Boy, I'm glad you're here to explain all that. Uh, After this intro here, we'll take a quick look at a player profile on Grant Yoder. fun seeing all the courses for the first time and being on the Emporia State team with coach Emac. We've been playing really good together. We've only been beat in a single round. There's a lot of different courses in Emporia definitely. A lot of different variety of shots so you can always go out and practice. It's definitely been a fun environment to just hang out with the team at the cabin or warming up. Myself and Cade, if we can come out and shoot well, we can definitely put up some good numbers. And back to the coverage. Here we are on the Boulders course once again, the same course we saw teams play on yesterday. Starting off on hole one, a 333 foot downhill par three hazard bunker, short right of the pin and OB Creek very close behind it. Yeah, this hole can uh, has some couple hazards on it, so I wonder if the players will be playing a little safer than they did yesterday in the team play. Time, our feature card of the men's Division One singles from Emporia State University, Grant Yoder. Let's go, Grant. Grant Yoder up first, the only player we got to see yesterday and today. Clipped a little twig in front of him there. That might have taken off a little bit of speed. Yeah, I would guess that that would have been a lot better without clipping that tiny little thing. Next on the tee from Houghton, Zach Sisson. Houghton shot the hot round yesterday at 16 under on this course. That is very impressive. Yeah, including the eagle on 17. Wow. Wow. So you're talking in singles play or no, that was, that would be in the doubles event or the team's event, obviously. Yep. That was yeah. team play. Always fun to have a lefty on the card. You get to see lines that you don't otherwise get to see typically. Next on the tee. I'll try to keep From the Illinois soft pile, soft paw ballast bias out of this, but uh, Pavo, I'm a lefty as well myself. Oh, cool. Up next, Evan Bester. Looked like he was trying to flip that a bit flatter. I want to say it was more of uh, too overstable of a disc or something. It looked like he was going for a more direct line and just didn't throw it as flat as he intended. And finally, we've got Lance Hopright. Lance going for the much wider hyzer. Still ends up a bit left. We've got some long putts coming up here. Evan from about 50 feet maybe. And he's just laying up. Wants no part of that hazard bunker behind the pin from his angle. Yeah, you'll probably see these players playing relatively conservative. Um, the singles play doesn't, it isn't very important for the players, obviously, but being that the scores count towards the team score, it's very important that they perform well in order to keep their team in the in the competition. And not to be overshadowed, fantastic putt for birdie from Grant there. Outside the circle, starts off with a birdie. Keeping that momentum from yesterday on Emporia's great putting round.
Got to give a shout out to those great looking jerseys for Ohio State that Lance is wearing. Those are looking pretty fresh, Pavo. What do you think? Looking good. And here we get one more look at that great putt from Grant. He was putting right at the OB Creek too. No fear. Actually, barely squeaked over the rim. It looked a little cleaner than that from the other perspective. Great putt either way. And on to hole two, a 546 foot par four. As you can see, there's an OB Creek all the way down the right hand side. This might be a little more challenging for our left-handed player than the other three as this tee shot definitely favors a right-hand backhand shape. And once again, pin tucked very close to that same OB Creek. Grant with that wide hyzer. This is looking good. It's got the height it needs to get back to the fairway. And he's in the clear. That was a great shot, Pavo. We really had to trust that to hang that over the OB River and it fought back nicely right in the middle of the fairway. And here's Zach. Going for the high turnover line. It's a little bit low. Oh. And that barely crossed the OB line, unfortunately. So he's going to be throwing three from there. But because of the cut roll, he was at least in bounds way up the fairway. Another high righty backhand hyzer. This one more to the left, but still good. Oh, that's a more aggressive line from Lance. Does it have the distance? And it does. That's an impressive drive. Yeah, Lance really attacked that one. For the lefty there, we saw um, that must be pretty challenging for him to approach that one because you want to make sure you turn it over enough so it doesn't hyzer out at the end, but we saw a little bit of a burn there. Yeah. Great upshot there. Should be an easy birdie. And here is Zach's third after the penalty stroke. Harder drive, easier approach for the lefty backhand. Yep. Parked it. Grant with a nice controlled forehand chip shot into the green, and he's going to be inside 10 feet. Yeah, we saw that butter forehand a lot from Grant yesterday. I think we're going to keep seeing more of that today. Grant really has a well-rounded game. Good forehands, backhands, solid putter, as anyone from Emporia has to be, I guess, with that wind. And Lance for a birdie. There it is. Love seeing all the sponsors there on the back of his jersey really supporting the team. That's awesome for Ohio State. And Grant tapping in the birdie as well. Zach saving the par after the penalty stroke. And Evan with another drop in birdie. Well played by the card. Take one more look at Zach's form as he takes the very aggressive line, hanging it out over the OB for probably 90% of the flight. As we move on to hole three, I love this tee shot. Just tunnel shot out of the woods. This tee shot feels more like North Carolina golf than most of these courses do, but at least the second half feels more like the rest of this course out in the open. But with the shape that the hole demands, as we saw yesterday, the trick is to try to avoid the roll away, even on a good drive that comes in on Heiser on this hillside. Yeah, I'm really wondering how the uh, lefty Zach is going to attack this one. Great shot from Grant. Look at that. Nice soft landing. Great shot. Oh, that's a grip lock. 
And that actually kicked far enough right that he might be able to straddle out and make something happen from the fairway there. Lance a bit low. Good skip given the thickness of that grass, but yeah, he's still going to be a bit short. That line looked almost perfect. It just needed a little bit more height on it. Is that going with the forehand? This is looking good. Getting the full flex out of it. Nice skip. Now don't roll. And he's good. That's always the gamble at the end of a flight like that. Yeah, and here we see Evan. Tricky lie. Couldn't really put his body into it or get a run up at all. So he's going to be trying to save Bogey now. At least he still has a smile on his face. It's hard not to out here, Pava, when you look around and see these beautiful mountains and hills surrounding the course. True that. Hmm. Lance wants no part of that birdie bid and elects to lay up for a par. Evan saves the bogey. And great birdie from Zach. Love seeing that lefty forehand off the tee. Yeah, this is not the easiest lefty hole. Great shot. Great shot from Zach. And Grant Yoder. He goes three for three to start. Man, he's really taken on that, uh, following that lead from an Emporia State's team round yesterday. I believe they went eight for eight yesterday. They did. Start. That's true. Yeah, they almost went perfect on the front nine. Just missed hole nine. Here we take one more look at the putt for birdie from Zach. Halton is one of the few teams out here with a coach. And we move on to hole four. Love this one. OB Creek that the players have to cross. And once again, a basket tucked dangerously close to that creek. But uh, this can be a fun one to ace run given the rock wall right behind it. You can kind of be aggressive without too much risk. Yeah, I'm wondering if we'll see many sh more shots up the gut or swinging it wide left to right. Looks like uh, we have Grant lining up that left to right forehand again here. Is that wide enough or lucky enough? And he's perfect. Look at that. Utilizing the backstop. What a great shot from Grant. I'm guessing he was trying to go wider to go around all those trees, but maybe not. Ooh, a little tickle there. Well... Could have been a much worse reaction off of that little twig bush thing. He's still going to have a putt for birdie. Great shot from Lance there as well. Some scary putts facing the creek, but birdie looks nonetheless. Evan going for the direct line. Oh. I'm not going to say that was the worst tree ever for Grant either. True. For Evan, excuse me. Beautiful step putt there from Zach. He knew from the second that left his hand it was in. He started walking it in. Just a little bit left side for Evan. He's got an interesting grip on his putt, the way he uh, kind of curls his thumb and, and presses down on the top of the flight plate with it. Great birdie from Lance. Great birdie from Grant as well. And that's four for four for him. And Evan taps in the par. Almost got the star frame on that one. And we'll be back after a quick ad break. And actually after that ad break, we will also see a player profile on Zach.
here we are at the International Disc Golf Center. The course is just shining for the competitors. This place means a lot. It's the type of course that where as soon as you think you have it figured out, it, it shows its teeth. At a major tournament, there's a different kind of feeling. Make your career, go to the next step, you need to win a major. We show where we came from and hopefully show where we're going with events like this this weekend. Last season, we had around 30 qualifying events. This year, we've grown to more than 70 regionals and conference events for this season. That has led to more than 88 schools in attendance and 700 competitors. The energy you see from the players and the passion that they have when they're representing their favorite school or their university is incredible. It really makes this event special. You don't see that anywhere else in the disc golf world. Left at 6 a.m. Monday morning, got here at 9 p.m. and it's got a big Airbnb and the courses are just beautiful. It's it's really crazy like to have three courses that are just like so beautiful on one property and so close to one another. It's just it's great. We saw the tee times the first time out it was 7:30 and that was us and we were like oh but we kind of got ahead of the wind. So that was a good thing. And to come out on top, it's kind of like, yeah, I, I think we're, we're here to stay. I was the newest addition to the team. It, it was pretty cool to join and have this much like success early on. It's just, I have fun out here. It's taking the experience. Uh, our coach told us just like look around, look at like where we are and just enjoy it. I love seeing those player profiles. That's really cool. Yeah, it is nice to see the players talk about their journey here to Nationals. And we also got to give a shout out to Guthrie, the coach from Houghton. He's had a lot to do with creating and getting that team to where it is. And back to the coverage. Here we are on hole five, a pretty straightforward 261 foot par three. Once again, the primary challenge is the OB Creek pretty close behind the pin. Grant puts a nice hyzer out there, and it's going to put him about 25 feet or so. Good drive. Zach once again going for the forehand. That right side is much more open than the left side. Looks like that's a bit wide. Yeah, I think that was wider than he would have liked. Let's see if he can get some ground play. Mm. Yeah. Circle's edge, maybe. Next up, Lance. Lower line, playing for the skip probably. Does he get it? Yes, he does. Trickles That's in there nicely. Good drive. And Evan, I wanted to say that was a bit wide too, but that is a very overstable disc, and that is perfect. Looks like he was playing that line on purpose. Another great putt from Grant, and that puts him five down through five holes. What a start for the young man. Oh, no, Zach. He's hoping for the star frame. That's too bad. Lance gets the birdie. Zach saves his par. And last but not least, Evan with that drop in birdie. Don't hit your head, sir. Yeah, you hear the river flowing in the background. That's actually the Catawba River. And uh, Pava, are you aware where that flows to? 
Wow, you're putting me on the spot. I'm actually not. All the way to Rock Hill, South Carolina, home of the USDGC. See, I should know that. That, that must be the connection with the, the course designer, Andrew Duvall. He just designs courses that are anywhere along the Catawba River. Yeah, I heard after he puts in a long day, he just floats all the way back home when he's done. <laughs> and on to hole six. 402 foot par three, wide open tee shot, but very tight green with trees around it and the creek extremely close on this one, probably closer than any other hole so far. Uh, but that cart path you see there is safe on this hole, which is pretty fair when the basket is that close to it. Yeah, that tree off the tee really forces you to commit to the straighter shot, like we see Grant throwing here with a little bit of turnover or that wide, wide hyzer. And I believe I mentioned it in yesterday's team's coverage, but this is a hole where you do see a lot of players in singles play just playing for the par. The risk reward of, of trying to attack the green is just not worth it with how close the creek is and how the, the slope goes down towards it as well. And two players so far playing for par, obviously going that far to the right. And here's another one. And let's see if we can get one player attacking it. Yeah, Zach's choosing to go with the forehand. That seems like a much easier or a straightforward option than the backhand turnover. Oh, he puts a good flex on that. Good distance. But once again, electing to play for par on purpose. Can't blame them. Good thing that sat down. Even these layups when you're playing for par, they're not guaranteed. You know, you could execute a what feels like a good layup and it could hit one of those rocks and pop up and roll into the water. So you really got to think about the ground play on these layups. Perfect layup from Grant. And from Zach as well. Something about that river flowing in the background, Pablo, really creates a calming feel. You know, you love hearing that flowing and the chains banging in the background too. You got to love that. Absolutely. The river that plays so close to so many of the baskets, not only on this course, but other courses on the property as well, uh, is really one of the defining characteristics of North Cove. And I do love it. Yeah, they've really incorporated a lot in the course design. On the next hole here, you'll see that they have to carry it in the middle of the fairway uh, to avoid that OB river. And I got a note too, my apologies to Evan since I'm gonna talk about a different player during his slow-mo, but uh, Grant's birdie run was only ended by him playing for par on purpose. So he still hasn't made a mistake. That's a great observation there, Pavo. As we move on to hole seven, a 627 foot par four. I said it yesterday and I'll say it again. This is the signature green, at least on this course, if not on the entire property. I love this rock formation up by this basket here. Uh, also of note, the drone flew over a bridge there. The river there is out of bounds as is the bridge itself. Uh, if the players land in out of bounds, there is a drop zone just short of the bridge. So there are two ways to attack this hole. You can either get aggressive off of the tee shot or you can lay up on the tee shot and then get aggressive on your second shot. No, don't flip. You're lucky. Oh, mm. yeah, he flipped that over a little bit. He had a chance of getting lucky through those trees, but in all likelihood it was going to end up OB and it did end up OB. Yeah, I was uh, interested to see Grant take the uh, tack route there. They really go after the river and try to cross the into the inbounds area there. That looked like a, a big challenging shot for him. I wonder what the other players will do after seeing him go OB. Looks like two of them have decided to play safe so far. Zach is not 
playing safe. He is trying to get across, but he turned it over too much as well and did not clear that OB Creek. So it looks like we're going to have two players going from the drop zone and two players who elected to lay up who have to go very aggressive on their second shots if they want any chance at a birdie. And looks like Lance overcooked that a bit and cut rolled left. Should still be a relatively easy up and down for par from there, though. This is looking good from Evan. Lots of power. Full flight. And he's still probably about 60 feet or so, but it's tough to reach the screen if you elect to play the layup off the tee. It's doable, but you gotta have quite an arm. Yeah, it's a crush there, Pavo, but luckily that, ooh, little slip there from Grant, but luckily the backstop there, the rocks really give you a chance to get aggressive um, on this hole. That's true. Great shot from Grant there from the drop zone, despite slipping. I mean, that was a pretty significant slip. Zach going for the flex forehand. Turned it over a bit much. But he's going to have a long look from over there. Yeah, if you notice the white painted line on top of the rocks too, that's a relief area. So if the disc actually lands up there for player safety, there's a drop zone um, in play on this, hole, uh, on this hole for that situation. And it's that tiny little orange stake you see there. So it's basically a tap in. So if, if you land up on that rock or tucked underneath of that rock, I believe as well, where you can't get any, you know, legal stance, then you would just go from that drop zone without a penalty. Yep. Oh <laughs> he almost kicked that in off the rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's laughing about it too. Oh, that's framed up beautifully, Pavo. Love how this course is named Boulders and so true to its namesake. Wow. Another great putt from Grant. Grant hey. showed up today for this round. Man, his first real mistake of the round was going OB off of this tee shot, and he still managed to save the par from that drop zone. That is not an easy thing to do. Getting the fist bump from Coach Emac. I know we talked about the highest rated spotter yesterday. That might be the highest rated caddy we have out here as well. Yeah. Emac snuck into our coverage two days in a row. And this is a bit of a tricky lie for Lance. If he had stopped just five or ten feet sooner, he would have had a straight putt at it. But he has to try this awkward Annie putt given the angle of the boulders from where he's at. And he doesn't quite get enough Anheuser on it. Zach taps in for bogey real quick. And Lance getting the bogey as well. <laughs> Evan with the drop in par. One more look at this beautiful putt from Grant. This kid is getting his share of slow-mo, that's for sure. And he's earned it, Pavo. These are some great putts he's hit today already in this round. Absolutely. So much confidence. As we move on to hole eight, and I'll mention it again in case some of our viewers didn't see yesterday's coverage. There are two Mandos here. This hole is now a double Mando. It was not in the past, and many players would opt for a high spike hyzer around the outside. I love the addition of the Mandos, forcing players to hit that gap shot straight at the basket. Yeah, and another thing they changed, Pava, that we were talking about yesterday is they took away that OB from behind the basket as well, and I think that gives the players much more of a green light to really attack this green. Yeah, in past years, that little creek back there had some water in it, and it's mostly dry this year, which I believe is why they made that change. Hmm. Nope. Second mistake of the round for Grant. Ooh, beautiful line from Evan. Flips it up to flat. And there is a little bit of water over there, but it is all casual. Oh, it's casual this time. That's good to know. He absolutely pured that gap. I was uh, disappointed to see that unfortunate play off this uh, log there. Yeah, 
Good shot from Lance, perhaps a little bit too flippy of a disc choice. And he finds some of that casual water as well. Lance's form actually really reminds me of Emerson Keith for his drives and his putts. Just something I noticed during the round. Not a bad player to emulate. No, not at all. And Lance is uh, not only is a great player, but he's also a great leader for Ohio State. He's one of their team captains. Um, I can tell because we've been emailing a bit back and forth, but Lance is very active on uh, organizing his team and getting them here to the national championship. Always good to see that. And a great upshot there from Grant. Looks like he'll have a pretty short putt to try to save his par. And here we see some of the uh, challenging terrain that Lance has to deal with. He's checking with his card mates on whether or not that stance is legal with his left foot within that 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And they tell him it's good. And he elects to just lay up for the par. Tough to give a putt any kind of momentum from a, from a stance like that. Getting tangled up in the bushes a little bit. And, oh, poor Evan. Poor Evan. Oh, I do not envy him right now. Oh, my gosh. That... That's almost up to his knee. That is going to be a wet foot the rest of the round as well, Pavo. You know, there's some squishing action going on after that. Come on. Oh, sit down. Sit down for him. Okay. Man, I really wanted to see him get the birdie from, from that putt. That was close. That was close. Hopefully he's got a caddy that can maybe sacrifice a shoe for him or something because uh, that's going to be a challenge for the rest of his round dealing with that. That's a, a bonus caddy. If you can get a caddy with the same shoe size as, as you, they just offer you their shoes if you get a wet shoe during your round. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think that was the case for Evan. So like you said, he will be dealing with a wet and soggy foot for the rest of the round. Gotta love the commitment, though, Pavo. I do, yeah. I believe with it being casual, he had the option of taking relief straight behind it, but that would have made his putt a good 20 feet farther away and kind of a tricky area as well. So he opted to just go for it and put his leg in the water. I think as we were talking about all that, we may have uh, glossed over Zach's birdie there, but great birdie, sir. And uh, the other three card mates taking par. As we take one more look at that close putt from Zach, he did all the work off the tee to get that birdie. Yeah, he made up for that short miss earlier, hitting that one dead center in the chains. As we move on to the final hole of our front nine, hole nine. 378 feet really shapes well for a flex shot righty backhand or lefty forehand and another really cool green with you guessed it boulders all around it yeah i'm interested to see if they'll play towards the flat spot where the cart path is or if they'll really attack the green and uh, potentially get that unlucky roll in play uh, the cart path is safe on this one so a good shot is really landing on that cart path at the base of the hill i'd say Looks like Zach didn't quite get the turn on that that he wanted. Like a very overstable disc, he was just going for a full flex. And honestly, that roll away isn't, isn't bad. He should have an easier angle to attack the green now than he would have if it's stuck up on that hillside. That's pretty high out of Grant. Does it have enough speed to get there? Yeah, I think he just got that a little higher than he intended, and it stalled out and faded left. Most likely a layup for par from over there. I love how smooth Grant's throws are today, too. They're looking really good. Yeah, it looks like he overturned that one a bit. A little bit of a cut roll. Got a lot of players in position to most likely lay up for a par. Let's see if Lance can put it close enough to give it a birdie bid. Oh man, I liked it initially, but that disc was just too understable for the line he threw it on.
Yep. Lay up for par. Evan doing the same. Zach doing the same as well. And Grant doing the same. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, well, that's the danger of this green. Wow, that kept rolling as long as it could have. It completely ran out of speed. Yeah, that was unfortunate for Grant. Let's see what he can do with his long comebacker. Yeah, looks like he'll probably save the bogey, but that's unfortunate. Oh, no. Evan's layup there actually ended up a little farther away from the basket than I, than I thought initially. Great bump from Lance, right in the center of the chains, with confidence. And Grant looking to save the bogey. He's pretty close, but it's kind of a scary putt with the drop-off right behind it from his angle. He didn't seem too worried, though. I have to say, too, Pavo, I love the look of all the players in their jerseys and uniforms. It really creates a unique experience when you see all of them repping their, their team colors. Yeah, it does. It's not something you really see at any other events. And we got... Three pars and a bogey on that hole. As we take one more look at Lance's par save here. And that's gonna wrap up our front nine. Leading our group, we have Grant Yoder at four down after that hot start, five down through five. The other players hanging in there at three down, even and two down. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you again on the back nine.